Hello everybody, welcome back to Cure for the Common Game. Today, in deck number 498, wow, we're going to talk about Darren King of Keljord. Now this card, I have, uh, as you all know, uh, I used to use the the deck listing with website tapped out, but there was just a lot of things that they didn't offer, and I was searching for a new one. That's when I found Architect, and I am slowly listing all my decks on Architect. Now, but on Tapped Out, I still have a page that I, I, I keep up. It is legendary creatures that I do not have. <clears throat> because, first and foremost, in order to build every commander deck, I have to have every commander. So, there are, when I first populated the list, there was well over a hundred uh, legends that I didn't have. And now I'm down below 60. Uh, and and that list is on my tapped out page. Legends I need, and uh, several of y'all have actually sent me a lot of commanders. And this has been uh, Mr. Chris. Thank you, Chris, very much for for donating Darren here. Uh, it's a uh, definitely checks it all off the list. But let's look at Darren. He's a six mana three three. Now this was originally from Cold Snap, so uh, the whole shtick about Cold Snap was it was a forgotten file, a, a forgotten part of the Ice Age set, and as which they overcosted everything because that's how it was done back then. But anyway, is very unique. He's a human soldier. Uh, him being a king, I wonder if this is one of the cards that got eroded to noble. Seemed like most of the kings. Anyway, not important. Whenever you're dealt damage, you create that many 1-1 one, one white soldier creatures, tokens. So, that is different. Because most of the time, white wants to prevent the damage that is dealt to us. So, But Darren here kind of makes you want to take damage. Now, there are uh, a lot of ways you can go with this. Well, there's actually two that popped into my mind. And my first choice, I didn't have everything I wanted for, so I had to kind of fill out with the second. Um, the damage dealing there. The damage dealing is the big part. So let's start with that before we get into like ramp and card draw and things like that. First off, you want to take damage. You want to take damage, but you also don't want to die. So, when you take damage, you get that many 1-1 one, one soldiers. Now, Suture Priest, the, uh, the two cards I, I don't have, the Soul Sisters, Soul Warden and Essence Warden. Not Essence Warden, because that's green. Soul Warden and the one from uh, Rise of the Eldrazi. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, but... Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain a life. So that is that negates the damage that you took. So this way, not only are you not taking damage, you take the damage, you get the creatures, and then you gain the life right back. Because if you take three damage, you get three soldiers, and you gain three life. So I would say you break even, but actually you're net positive tokens. Uh, it does kind of make people not want to attack you while Darren is on the board. So I, I do have Suture Priest. Uh, I have Healer of the Pride. This does double duty. I, I mean, you actually net life off of the exchange here with Healer of the Pride. Anointer Priest, whenever a creature token enters the battlefield, that's fine. That's exactly what we're doing. And then this new thing from Modern Horizons, Answered Prayers, Whenever a creature enters a battlefield under your control, gain one life. And then, you know, this becomes a 3 3 angel or whatnot. So, but the problem is, we need to take damage. Uh, there is a lot more cards in this category to when a creature enters a battlefield, gain a life. There are a lot. And that was actually where I wanted to go with the deck hardcore, but I just didn't have enough to fill out. A deck and it be you know somewhat viable but we've got to take damage so 
things like, uh, I mean, obviously barbed wire. Now, there are uh, City of Brass and Tarnished Citadel and a, a lot of the lands that do damage to you. But to be honest with you, I couldn't really justify, you know, I don't have that many, oh, I, I don't have any extra Cities of Brass floating around here. But even then, in a model white deck, uh, you know. Anyway, but barbed wire, it's not great. It's one damage. Okay, what is? Uh, Angel's Trumpet. Now, this actually is just going to multiply your soldiers exponentially. Because at the end of each player's turn, tap all untapped creatures that player controls that did not attack. Now, it don't say anything about summoning sickness. So if you took damage on your turn and you got a few soldiers at the end of your turn, well, tap them and take that much damage. And then we're going to get take the damage and get more soldiers. Right? This is, uh, yeah. So Angel's Trumpet, it kind of makes me want to like focus on Vigilance for some reason just to help us take damage. Now, Time Bomb is slow. Uh, I really wanted the Ice Age version because I, I like the art, but this is just a weird... Anyway, 5th edition, what can you do? Uh, so, you throw a counter on it e e every upkeep, and then you can sack it, spend a mana tap sack, and just deal that much damage to everybody and everything, hence you getting some soldiers. Yeah, really, really slow. There's some better cards. Um, Jade Monolith is uh, a a perfect... How many times did you hear that? Jade Monolith is a perfect card for this deck. Whoa. So, yeah. So you spend a mana to take damage done to any creature you control to yourself. So not only can you save Darren from combat or whatever else you've got, if you, know, you just swing all willy-nilly, and if they block with a 10-10, hey, no problem. I will take that 10 damage. I will get 10 more soldiers. My creature don't die. And I have a team now. But let's talk about Armageddon Clock. Yeah, it gets a counter on it. I wonder, put one count, I wonder what the name of that counter is. I wonder if that's a time counter or a charge counter or what. Anyway, I don't think that's important either. We're not proliferating or whatnot, but at the end of your upkeep, each player takes damage equal number of counters on it. Now, anybody can pay forward or move a counter, but most of the time people won't spend four mana to prevent one damage. So this thing just adds and adds and adds, and it's every turn. So, but that's kind of where I wanted to go with the deck and, and and of course there's some peripheral items too like a Johnny's pride mate uh, when you gain that life it gets the counters and you end up with a ridiculously large a Johnny's pride mate um, gold knight commander I want to talk about this because yes um, there are a ton of enchantments that are better I'm having trouble calling the one to mind right now help me out it's the plus one plus one counters when all the y'all know what I'm talking about. yeah uh, it's late and my brain is tired, <laughs> but um, there are a lot of other enchantments that make the actual you know plus one plus one counters permanent. But this allows you to, you know, every time you get one of those tokens, your team gets plus one. So that is where we sit with that part of the deck. The rest of it, I was like, well. Tribal Soldiers. So, before we get into the actual soldier cards, let's look at, um, sure, why not some, some mana here. Heraldic Banner is perfect. Uh, you know, it's going to tap for a white, and it gives your team plus one. Crashing Drawbridge is going to give the team haste. Uh, Marble Diamond, Mannequin, Gold Mirror, Armillary Spear, Mana Prism, and most importantly, Sword of the Animist. Now, I love Sword of the Animist. Um, in mono white decks, it's really good with like Emiria and stuff like that that I don't have in here, but it's still a great card. It just ramps up that mana for white. 
um, some card draw, uh, see your sundial, and fool's tone. Now, I I don't mind fool's tone because there's a good chance we're not going to have any cards in our hand, right? But let's look at our um, soldiers. So the first thing I wanted to do was because the, the tokens that we are getting from our commander are, in fact, soldiers. So, yeah, tap five soldiers, exile target creature. That seems really good. Bally Rush Banneret makes our soldiers cheaper. That's, that's awesome. Now, Knight Captain of Eos, it brings two soldiers with it, and then... Uh, a white and sack a soldier to fog. Well, no, it, yeah, it's all combat damage. Uh, Kalinda's captain is kind of uh, removal. You, you know, t when he gets big, he destroys all the things. Uh, even Cloud Chasers, uh, flying soldier, that's also kind of removal. Rock's Pike Master, soldier that passes out first strike to the team. Daru War Chief, it makes them bigger and cheaper. Uh, I mean, there's no part of that I don't like, except for the four mana one one part. Actually, it's not a one one though. Now, is it? Because it's a two three. Because it's a soldier. Obzon Falconer. Now, this may be the reason why I should run that enchantment is the uh, all of the soldiers that have Outlast because they uh, I'm running the ones that give the creatures with a one one counter on it an ability. Giving them flying, that's pretty good. And that, oh man, I can't think of the name of that enchantment. It's a, it's rare, y'all know it. It's in a lot of token decks. Anyway, veteran swordsmith helps out soldiers. Uh, Fabled hero, dub just as double strike. Yeah, that's the only ability here, really, unless we just happen to. Yeah, this is a slot for one of the soul sisters, probably. Field marshal. Y'all saw me get that one in. You know, I mean, I couldn't have like a soldier deck without, you know, Field Marshal. Um, Silver Flame Squire. It's a soldier. And you get that uh, plus two, plus two, and untap thing going on. Master Decoy, because that's not annoying at all. Yeah, I'm going to tap your big game winner. Veteran Armorsmith. Of course, Skyfisher. There's the Anuk Bond Kin. Uh, has first strike. E e each creature with a one-one counter on it has first strike. Cliffside Rescuer. Now I'm counting Raise the Alarm as a a creature card because basically it is uh, Longbow Archer, Arak Glaive Master. Now it here we get into equipped. Now I don't have a lot of equipment for the deck. Uh, Hardly any, actually. So, um, my plan for the deck is to go further toward that commander ability of losing life, getting the tokens, and dealing more damage to myself, and getting the soul sister things, and just being able to snowball like that. That's what the the tribal soldier theme will probably. Uh, go by the wayside. I, I may keep like the champion creatures that help out the tribe, but uh, Arak Blade, right? Loyal Sentry is a good soldier. I didn't even think that was, I mean, you know. Elite Vanguard, Sins Tactician, Hyksis, Relic Seeker, and the Swordsmith. Now, <clears throat> I think now is probably a good time to talk about my two equipment. <laughs> Fire Shrieker and Veterans Armaments, of course. I mean, it's a soldier deck. Uh, I am running the Echoes of, of the Treekin for the bolster ability because it does it does give the 1-1 one, one counter. So, uh, there again, that's something I probably won't need once I go further into the commander ability. Now, Silver Flame Ritual, another one, it just puts a counter on your team. So... Yeah, triggering all, all uh, not really triggering, but enabling all of those, you know, your creatures with plus one counters get better somehow. Brave the Elements is just a good mono-white card, as is Armored Ascension and Battle Mastery. Battle Mastery is just good in anything that can produce a white mana. <clears throat> 
Uh, some removal, maybe? Erase, not the Earth's Legacy one. <laughs> it's not. It's the cons one. Uh, Demystify, Celestial Purge, Ravnicate War, there it is again, and Oblation. But I'm running those two cards. I'm probably getting close to being out of them. Huh? Um, let's look at the fun here. Uh, Elixir of Immortality, Holy Day, and Return to the Ranks is another card that I will probably, uh, you know, X target creature cards that convert a mana cost two or less. We have quite a bit of those. Uh, so, but most of the Soul Sister type cards fall into that category. I mean, the healer doesn't, but most of the rest do. So this may actually stay once I make that transition. But I want to talk about Eon Engine. Haven't played it. This thing got spoiled and everybody went, what? Reverse the game's turn order. Now, I thought about slapping this in Emery, but, uh, but then I read, you know, like Exile. I can't get it back and do it over and over again. So that's sad. I guess we could like imprint it on that artifact and make copies of it, but that seems that seems like an awful lot to just effectively keep messing with people's minds because that's all you're doing. You can lock somebody out of the game, I guess. I don't or a couple. Yeah, I don't know. Reversing the game's turn order just seems like a fun thing to do because um, a lot of times people. I mean, they plan out things, and, you know, uh, I'm going to do this on his turn and do this, but I don't know. I'm running it because it's fun. Um, it's different. And, you know, I've never cast this card. So let's look at our non-basic lands. Blighted Step. Here again, here's the spot where there's potentially out there, I think, probably five or six lands that act actively do damage to you. I, I like the Blighted Step because of the life gain just in case we're, you know, taking some serious damage. and uh, Rogue's Passage, uh, Cyclers of uh, Drifting Meadow and Secluded Step, Kabir Crossroads, and lastly, the original Karu Land. So, that is Daring King of Keljor. Um, like I said, the... With as many cards that are in it, it's going to play like tribal soldiers. And then once you happen to get one of those pieces, and people start realizing that you are netting more than you're losing, uh, maybe I should probably put a uh, some kind of protection thing in there, uh, whisper silk cloak or boots or something. I, I, I've been out of boots for a while. I, I think I've been out of cloaks for a while too, but. Um, something to protect him because once they figure it out, once the table figures out that, you know, you're never going to block, you're just going to take the damage and get more creatures and then gain more life than you lost. Um, yeah, daring gets shot <laughs> pretty quick. So, this may be one to come back to at some later. Oh, oh, got to put my soldier tokens in there. I don't know. I, I, I figured about that many soldier tokens would probably work. I I really like that. You know, full art. I mean, it, it's not full art, full art, but it it's uh. We get more art on these tokens than we normally do. You know, so hopefully that'll be enough. Really, technically, I guess all I really need is what three. Three tokens, and then I, I can use dice um, because technically all you ever really need is three. Uh, one to mark the untapped, one to mark the tapped, and one to mark the sick. I guess I don't know, but there is something kind of appealing about when you're and if you're token players, you'll understand what I'm saying. That uh, um, you know all those tokens out there on the board. However, there's a flip side of that. If if we've got you know, if you're steady making goblin tokens, elf tokens, whatever, uh, like Krinko, and if you're steady making those tokens, and your board just keep you just keep filling up your board with the actual tokens, that puts a big target on you. But if you've got like one goblin token out there with a D20 on it, with 
14 on it. Yeah, I've got 14. It doesn't look as imposing psychologically to the other players. So um, that's just something to think about. If you're wanting that psychological effect, like if you're trying to push a board wipe or you're trying to push players into not attacking you, yeah, you can gum up your board with the individual tokens and, oh, that's a lot. I don't want to mess with that. I'll attack over here. I don't know. It's just one of those psychological things that comes from playing in a multiplayer format. And I don't know. I kind of like it. I like the fact that you can use whichever side of that you want. Ooh, I don't want to encourage the board wipe because I know I'm fixing to do something just nasty next turn. So here's my 12 soldiers. Yeah. I don't know. Six of one, half dozen the other. So, deck number 498 is done and in the books. Uh, I do appreciate y'all watching. Um, we'll have 499. I think this is... Welcome to November. Uh, we got through October, so this is... Uh, uh, this is the November 1 video, yeah. Um, I recorded it several days ago, year time, so... Got through uh, Decktober. Uh, I realized that all those videos that I did weren't actual actual decks, all, all of them, but did quite a few. I think I did more deck videos in October of this year than I have in the entire three years I've had the channel. So uh, that, it, it's a lot of a lot of decks done. Uh, got through most of Eldraine. There's only, I think, two Eldraine decks left, so. Uh, Kenrith and El oh no three I still haven't got a Yorvo or Yorbo or whatever the Y green guy I didn't realize that till like yesterday I just never picked one up um, gotta fix that but yeah so we're in November and uh, deck number four hundred ninety nine is Promicon so uh, I don't know if it'll be tomorrow I'm uh, to be honest with you, it's a uh, it takes a lot. It takes a lot to to do video content every day, and this was just 31 days, uh, a little more than 31 because today's the first, and then I started a few days in September. I think I did like five days in September, so I've done I don't know 35, 36 something days in a row, and that's a lot, especially when it's deck building. Because, you know, it's a 100-card deck. Y'all know how, how, how long it takes to build an EDH deck. So you you build the deck. i got to list it. And then film it to y'all and upload it. So it takes a lot. So I'm probably not going to keep uh, the the, <laughs> the video a day thing. Because uh, we're getting into, uh, well, it's November 1. So that means it's officially time to pull all this Christmas stuff out of the attic. By the time you see this, I'll already have it done. <laughs> anyway, I do appreciate y'all watching. Um, you let me know what you think. Uh, and if you're watching this long, I, I do appreciate it. Um, be sure to subscribe. You know, I do. Uh, obviously, if you're watching this late, you know, I, I just do random deck techs uh, on all uh, every commander. 498 of them anyway. But right now, I think we will shuffle and cut.